I've got no plan for this. Okay. So, <clears throat> I don't know what we're going to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, let me, let, me, let me start off with telling you that this is our first time Regina yeah. and I have been to Australia. And man, what a, what a great experience. It's, yeah, it's, it's um, been incredible. Yeah, the, the landscape is, is awesome. Um, in two hours, we could be on the, uh, the beach, sandy beaches, and then uh, in t within two hours, we're in the uh, rainforest. Yeah. That's close enough, by the way, so don't... It wait. is? We're good? Yeah, it's picking it up. Sweet. Yeah, it's yeah. perfect. So, uh, you know, that, that's just incredible. Um, we, we don't have that vers versatility in, versatility in yeah. the States, so it was really good to see. Everybody we've met have been, yeah. has been really chilled out and laid back, receptive, and, and great people. Fantastic. And the fish rooms, the fish shops yeah. and the fish rooms are phenomenal. Yeah, incredible, um, beautiful. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm sure you probably took us to select places, you know, that people you know or whatever. But um, to have that many within a, an hour drive is, is incredible. You know, we live in Pittsburgh, and there's, there's only three independent, really three big independent mm -hmm. stores left in Pittsburgh. Um, anything else you're looking for, four-hour drive, three, four-hour drive? Yeah, it is kind of amazing how much stuff's mm -hmm. close by. Yeah, um, and, and quality stuff. It's know, cool to be able to, like, repay the favor because like you guys took me around mm -hmm. so like having you guys here like i was saying you like it's strange because um obviously like i watched i know you didn't make the videos but like i watched videos of your fish rooms and like your talks and all that when i was like much younger like 14 15 i feel like all right and then it's kind of weird to be like taking you around like in australia and like having been to your place and having you at my fish room was even weirder yeah, yeah. so a beautiful fish room yeah thank you yeah. um well, thank you yeah so it's been cool but yeah so for everyone that doesn't know you um this is eric bodrock and regina spotty Hello. and today i guess we're just like we've been doing a lot of talking we've been driving around and all that so mm -hmm. but i think we can just talk about maybe like we haven't you've never really talked about how you started and like and all that have you like um, no, not, not really yeah because um, like that kind of surprised me when we met like that you've literally only done fish your whole pretty, life whole pretty life. much yeah whole pretty life. much um the only job you ever had yeah i was uh i joined the well the very first how we got started was a fish tank it was a promotion at a store my sister worked at and then um we had some platies in there and the uh the platies had babies and uh, that led to a second tank um the platies actually I got from school. I was a, I was a, uh, my homeroom's class was a science class and uh, I was seated in right, right in front of the aquarium. So the t teacher put me in charge of feeding the fish every morning. So at the end of the school season, he says, you, you have a fish tank, take, take some stuff home. So we had a promotion tank that my, uh, my sister got from uh, one of the big department stores. It just had a couple of goldfish in it. So I took those fish home and that's the platies that ended up breeding. And then since we had babies, the family was never into fish at all, but we had babies and, you know, my mom's like, oh, look how cute they are. So that led to another tank and that tank, uh, you got five free fish with it. And, um, you know, the five free fish were going to be zebra danios or you know, something cheap and expensive. And um, back in those days, there was no super stores. There was no box stores, no big pet chains or anything. It was in a Kmart, which is now gone in the U.S. And you press a button on the wall and little old lady from the shoe department would come over to catch your fish. So my mom just looked to see what the most expensive fish was. It says, I'll take five of those. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the lady was like, oh, uh, yeah, well, those, those aren't supposed to be the free ones. And she, my mom said, well, the, where's the free ones? Yeah. She said, well, they all died. And my mom says, well, I'm not leaving the store till I get five free fish. So it happened to be corridors. And um, soon afterwards, they spawned. And we had eggs on the tank. And typical kid, I had bumblebee gobies and coley loaches and... You know, just, uh, just all the kids' fish, you know, neon tetris, things like that. So we seen eggs, and we had no idea what they were from. So that led to another tank. We, Mom went out, bought another tank, and took all the fish out, left the eggs alone, and it ended up being corridors of palliatus, peppered quarries. Oh, wow. So they ended up spawning. I remember we had bimini blue gravel, pebble gravel on the bottom. And they, those grew up to about, you know, a centimeter and a half. And my dad worked with a guy that was in the Pittsburgh Aquarium Society. I'm, I'm, this is 15 years old now. Well, probably 16 now. And um, this, my dad brought him home one day after work. And the guy was like, I'll give you 75 cents a piece for the, all the babies. And I had like 30 of them. So I'm like, wow, I 
can make money doing this. Yeah. And that pretty much, it took off from there. Um, by the time I graduated high school, uh, I had worked in four different shops, aquarium shops. Um, I was managing actually one of them. Um, as soon as I got out of high school, I wanted to be, be in law enforcement. So I, got, I went into criminal justice and uh, me and a, 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 an elderly couple that was in the fish club, uh, I used to travel with them to events. We went to a, a, a sheriff sale. Uh, it was a bankrupt business just getting ready to open up. It was a full line pet shop. And we ended up buying probably 90, 95% of the store for $1,800. They needed like 86,000 was the assessed value of it. Jesus. But there was nobody there. So we got it for like $1,800. Mm -hmm. So we basically had a full line pet shop sitting in our driveways and garages and neighbors' backyards and stuff. And that led to uh, finding a location on a main road and me and this other couple opened up. I ran it, they were si basically silent partners. That lasted for three years and we, we weren't getting along as in the partnership. Yeah. They bought me out and then that led to a series of uh, me having my own shops. So that's, so that's in a nutshell. I could do a couple hours yeah. details and, on all of that. But. but like Eric, you started, so, I mean, you've done shops, you've had like run multiple aquarium stores, worked in them basically. Right. Right. And then from there, now you guys have at your house, I still haven't posted the videos, but like 300 tanks between mm -hmm. the two of you. Right. And you just, um, I mean, it's like a semi-retired thing, but like yeah. you're yep. just breeding fish and basically like living the dream. Right. Like, if you're a fish nut. You're, you're a fish, fish geek, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, um, we could work on it 24 seven if we want to, um, take a break if we want. Yeah. You get inspiration at 11 o'clock at night. You know, Regina's already gone downstairs. At and you guys met the fish shop too. Yeah, yeah. in his fish shop, yeah. yeah. So. yeah. She, she was one of my customers. Yeah. I used to make a lot of money off of her. Now she cost me a fortune, so. <laughs> but um, she has her own fish rooms too. When we moved into our new house, I built her fish rooms first. It's like a his and hers. Yeah. yeah. She, yeah. she dabbles in a lot of things. I, have to, I don't have the same taste as he does. I, he does all these pluckos, and I have no interest in pluckos. So I do tetras, reservoirs. I do everything else. Yeah, I, and I love that. Like, mm -hmm. your room, I absolutely yeah. found Thank you. so fascinating. And Thank you. even um, while you guys have been here, I've jumped on the opportunity to get Regina's yeah. advice for spawning yeah. stuff. Yep. So like I really wanted to spawn um, these impertetras in the neons, mm -hmm. and for some reason, like I, you don't find really real advice mm -hmm. for some of those things online. Like, no. like I'm sure you do, but like I, I don't know. I'd rather just get it from the experts. Right. Right. So we kind of troubleshooted what I was doing, and then this morning I got a huge spawn from both of those fish. <laughs> Good. Thanks to your advice. Yeah. So. Yeah, it was pretty cool. When you got in the car, you're like, guess, guess what I did? Like, I spawned, that was the, awesome. I spawned yeah. neons and emperors. I'm like, Good already? Thing. I mean, we, of course, we've been here like six days or seven days. Or you're, I mean, I'm sure you're ready to get get the Americans no, out No, no, it's move been move great on, having so. you. Yeah, I've really, really loved having you guys around. And it's been cool because like, I haven't um, done a lot of the things that we did together. Like I haven't been to shops and looking at fish and buying fish like back like a hobbyist for a very long time. Mm -hmm. um, just because like, obviously I have my own shop. So, I don't know, I just don't get out and yeah. do it much. Mm -hmm. But, like, it was cool. I went and checked out all my favorite stores I used yeah. to sell fish to and yeah. said hi to the, all those people. And, like, um, yeah, and we bought stuff too. Mm -hmm. All right. And it's weird because you get, like, all this, like, little pieces of advice, like, just going and chatting. Yeah. Um, yeah, we find it really, really, all the shops we went to are phenomenal. Yeah. Um, it's, it reminds me of all the stores that we've seen in, in Europe, UK, in Germany, Norway. Really? The, the yeah. stores are or laid out all natural. You know, we didn't see any glow fish and hot pink gravel mm -hmm. and, you know, action ornaments, you know, skeletons sitting on toilets that Americans use that silly stuff. But, um, but you, you go into one store and they're, they're laid out um, with that design. The next store you go to, we see basically like kind of a cubicle system. You know, that one store where the guy made that whole wall for all the shrimp. I mean, the time and effort that went into that. Was yeah, Aussie's Aquarium, yeah. You know, and, and each store had their own, own little own little niche with um, what they specialized in. Uh, nano tanks are huge over here. And a lot of stuff we don't have in the States. Uh, you guys are big on seamless aquariums. Yeah. Which, uh, which are just kind of catching on now in the States. Um, we were at the one shop. They had a big display. It had to be 
Uh, it was probably 14 foot long, maybe three foot wide, three foot high, meter by meter by whatever 14 foot is in meters. Uh, yeah. You know, three, three and a half meters. And um, the whole back wall was nothing but water running down, and it was on a log, but it was almost solid of Anubias. Yeah. Never seen it. it that was the stream glass. tank you're talking about? What's that? The stream tank? Yeah. No, no. The no. The, we were at. The, oh, Ross's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah the yeah, whole that was back insane. wall that Anubius. That I mean, you know, I've been begging him to let me film that place. Unbelievable. Yeah, I've done like one video, but it didn't look like nearly as good as that. Mm. Like, because he just keeps getting better. Mm -hmm. So, because he keeps reinvesting in his shop yeah. and he's like just truly like a hobbyist, yeah. like yeah. one of the best shops. His shop was yeah, Ross um, asked his aquarium on the Gold Coast, that one is. Yeah. That one's really worth going to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice, nice shops. And the other ones, we had the, the one store where there was tanks all the way to the ceiling, big yeah. tanks. Smith's Aquarium. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's it, cool. It's just like you're being in a, a, a mega display store. Mm -hmm. Just incredible. So, very, yeah. very cold. We don't, we don't see things like that in the States. It's, mm. it's, it's not that advanced. It's not that. Um, we don't see that in our area. Yeah, but, but there's not that many stores. We, we've seen Aquarium Zen, you know, in, uh, Good shop. in Seattle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we were there. It, it's set up kind of like this, a lot of the stores we've seen here, much smaller, though. And you, your stores are pretty pretty big and elaborate, and a lot of them. Yeah. Like it's evolved within an hour drive, too. Mm -hmm. There's, like, a lot of misconception, I guess. Like, I thought that, like, the hobby in the U.S. would be, like, more advanced than here. Like, and... I don't know, like from what I saw, like, yeah, there was like some cool shops, but like, um, like, I mean, there is different variety to them what you can get, like with having mm -hmm. less strict import rules, but like, mm -hmm. there is still heaps of variety here. Um, there, is. there is. And like the stuff that people like complain about not having here is like super niche down oddball, right. like stuff that like, right. I'm like, do you really want that that bad? Right. Like, right. Um, so we are quite lucky. Like, I mean, and we can also collect fish. We've got really good climate here as well. So right. like we don't have harsh winters or anything right. like that, you know. Yeah, this is winter here. Right? There's things blooming. Right. There's guys, that, tubs are loaded with yeah. fish. Yeah. yeah. You know, the girls are wearing dental floss bikinis at the beach. <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah, I, yeah. Just taking in all the sights, you know. Just, yeah. just, just to get the feel of uh, the Aussie life here. You yeah. Know? Pretty laid back. But uh, yeah, that's winter in Australia. It's like, yeah, you guys got it pretty nice. Yeah. So, so um... What's the plan then for the rest of the trip for you guys? Uh, we're, we're catching up with uh, Leo O'Reilly. Yeah. Um, we graciously, well, he's graciously uh, offered to uh, host us for the, uh, the last, what, nine days yes. we're here. And um, we're going to catch up with him today, actually. We're meeting him at your store. Yeah. And then um, we'll spend the day tomorrow with him, uh, Saturday and Sunday. And then Monday, we got hooked up with Jason Solda. Solda? Yeah. yeah, Australian Biotopes. Yeah, he's uh, any of you guys on the Rainbow Fish Live groups or any of that stuff know Jason very well. Uh, Regina and I spent um, two nights ago, I guess it was. Uh, we left. Uh, Nick took us up to see the skyline of Brisbane and then dropped us off with Jason, and we spent like three or four hours in the uh, rainforest up in the Tambourine, Tambourine Mountain. I would have come, but there's like a big important football game. Yeah, 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 yeah. We we wanted to give uh, Nick a break from us too. So uh, no, nah, no, nah, I didn't. Him and his that. lovely uh, partner. You should see her. Very, very nice girl. Yeah, gorgeous girl. She's right. So, but um, yeah, we gave them a break and went with Jason, and uh, just mind blowing. You know it, uh, the things we've seen. Got to see the uh, the glow worms and everything. Mm -hmm. Regina was in her her glory. Yeah, bugs. All the photograph bugs. So, so that uh, was really neat. Yeah, we fit in with Jason real well, so uh, he offered to, while we were here, he doesn't work right now, so uh, he was available to take us wherever we wanted, whenever we want. Yeah. So we're going to spend three days camping with him, up, going up to Ceres Creek. It's going to be so good, dude. Some of the places that, yeah. um, you know, the Rainbow Fish Geeks in the States would just be going crazy to go mm -hmm. to, so we're going to... Like those fish over in the U.S., how much did the rads cost? You know? um, yeah, you're looking twenty-five, thirty dollars a fish yeah. for the rads. Yeah, um, there's a couple guys breeding them pretty heavy. Yeah, because they're easy to breed, but like, again, it's pretty cool to be able to like catch them. Oh yeah, to go to the they know where they're found. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, you'll, you'll see like the Mellis habitat that, yeah. too, which that's, is going to be cool, like honey blue eyes. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I'd love for those to be like a bit more of like a staple pseudomogul, but yeah. I've had a bit of trouble breeding them. To be honest, yeah, I've had them years ago and had limited success with it. There's a couple of guys in the, in the states that are doing all right with them. Do you know what they're doing? Um, soft acidic water. Yeah. Um, pretty much the big key. Yeah. So good diet, but you know, a lot of people will try that and just not be successful. You just gotta 
probably just tweak it around a little bit. Because like heaps of people here say like sunlight. Um, but I don't know. I've bred them inside. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, because they say the same thing about like medakas and I bred like heaps of medakas inside too. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know how much the sunlight has to do with the fish. Like, I mean, maybe it has like a factor. All right. But um, the weird thing I noticed about the melis was like during summer, I, I'm a bit of a tight ass, so I don't really like spending like heaps of money on like air conditioning of the room, mm-hmm. especially because my roof's got kind of like shitty. Like it'd probably air condition okay, but I, like, I just let the room go hot. So mm-hmm. like it's like 27, 28 degrees Celsius. Okay. So like 80, 82 in the shop. Yeah, 80. And then like in winter, I'll, I'll turn the heater on in winter if it gets too cold, but like right now it's like 21 degrees Celsius. Mm-hmm. So my fish room is going through seasons, yeah. nice. which is kind of cool. So like during summer, the melis did nothing. Like laid like one every, egg every now and then. Like I, I just found that it was too hot. Like they just didn't like it. But as it got like to 24, 23, they st- started doing way better. Like no, good to know. Good yeah, to know. yeah. But then like the other thing that was interesting was um, like September came around last year. So uh, our spring and temperatures started coming a bit hotter. And that's also like the start of um, storm season. So, so like all my pseudomoguls kind of like quit breeding because it was getting a bit too hot, but the um, catfish went nuts because mm-hmm. like, it was like, oh, it's wet season right. time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. kind of, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I thought it was kind of cool like having like yeah. the seasonal fish room. Very. I think that's the key for a lot of the fish that people consider to be difficult to spawn is you need to have that change. Yeah. And it's got to be abrupt and it's got to be thorough it's not just oh, give them one or two days it's got to be weeks long yeah, or months yeah, long right, for a period yep i feel like catfish Natural. took kind of like a longer process for breeding it's not like yeah. the neons where you just take them and spawn mm-hmm. them like catfish is like let them settle in I, you're the expert i'm not but like let them settle in like it might even be good for them to have that season break mm-hmm. like to be like sure have their winter right sure fatten right. back up but sure. the males right. fatten back up yep. and, right we're hoping that that happens while we're here because we, our trip from the time we left till we get home, it's probably going to be something like 28 days. Yeah. So um, we have some good friends of mine taking care of this stuff. But you know, the fish are going to be fed every four or five days. Water changes aren't mm-hmm. going to be as often as we would have been doing at home. Mm-hmm. So, um, and I just found out yesterday our air conditioner broke in the house. Yeah, no, that's So, um, you know, scurrying, trying to contact, you know, 14-hour time different, trying to get in touch with my air conditioning guy and all that, which I did today, but... But hopefully that changes might be kind of a, a torment time Catalyst, for the fish. Yeah. And we yeah. get home, you know, start hammering with food, yep. you know, do a big water change hammering with food. That may have been kind of a little bit of a season thing for them. So we'll see. Yeah, because, Virginia, you do a lot of the seasonal mm-hmm. stuff, like yes. forced dry seasons. Yep. How does that yep. work? Um, this is the perfect, I think, opportunity for if you want to be lazy because you just don't do any water changes. You either let the water evaporate or you remove half the water from the tank and turn the airflow down, um, barely give them any food, and let, let that go for three months, four months, and then you begin to add water, not change water, but just add water so that you're diluting everything. And you, once you top the tank off and you begin to increase the amounts of food that you're giving your fish, once you begin to do steady water changes on them like every other day, and because this, we're mimicking now the rainy season and you increase the food amounts, the females just naturally begin to fatten up and this is a trigger for them. And then they'll begin to spawn usually within a month or two. Because, mm. so yeah, lots, lots of people don't like put themselves in the foot of the shoe. And like right. you have yep. s- this, obviously the simple like bod rock yeah. spotty yeah. rule, right. be the mm-hmm. fish. Right. Um, and it is, it is literally that simple sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you just don't see it. Yeah. And you don't think of it, you know. Yeah. I mean, like, even rainbow fish have a season. Right. Like, you know, right. like, yeah, they'll breed all year. But, like, here, they're not breeding right now. It's too yeah. cold. Exactly. Right. So, exactly. you know, think about be the fish a little bit off subject because no, we were right. just talking about tanks with no trim on it. I really love this tank, too. Oh, cool. We, yeah. we were sitting here the other day just admiring and Googling. As a matter of fact, he inspired anybody that's been to our house, the TAR 240 in the basement. We're going to switch it over to chunkle it over top, mount the lights and... Yeah. And I try to get some See? plants growing. I would take the, the lid off. and uh, It's cool. I've never changed the water in this tank. I've only ever topped it off. See? Yeah. 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 yeah, that's great. Yeah. So we've got inspired. We've seen a lot of that in other shops and some other hobbyist fish rooms. So we're going to do that. But getting back to the be the fish, um, you hear so many people when they spawn fish, especially quarries and like the, some of the Laura carries and stuff. 
that the, the fish spawn on the glass. You know, the quarries lay their eggs on the glass, and people pick it off the glass. And to, to show you how we don't think about be the fish, fish in nature have never seen a piece of glass. Yeah. So right, right then and there, you, you never even realized that probably, that mm -hmm. they don't lay their eggs, quarries don't lay their eggs on glass in the wild. So you got to think of where they're laying their eggs. So something that's... It's like the chopper right down here is. Right. Yeah. yeah. Hair grass. They love hair, hair grass. grass. Yeah. Like I, I remember like three years ago, I had some of them like, just couldn't get them to do anything. And mm -hmm. then um, you're like, oh, there was a guy from my shop who was breeding them like Tim hair Gross, grass. Got to give him credit. Tim, yeah. Tim teases me with it. But, uh, but like he was breeding them by like the hundreds, right? Yeah. 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 And then it's like one little thing that mm -hmm. there's just that yeah. missing piece on those harder species right. at least. And that's the thing, I think most people get stuck in a rut with how they want to try to spawn a fish. Mm. It doesn't work the same for all fish. So if something doesn't succeed the first time, try something different. Alter mm. the water chemistry, alter the substrate or the, the plants that are in the, in the tank. You just put plant, plants above them. It's, you have to just keep playing with something until it works. Right, and then even take that a further step when she says <laughs> you're gonna change the, change the plants, you know, mm -hmm. change the texture of plants. Yeah. You know, you could, um, you could put in uh, a corridor Weitzman, I couldn't breed them. I talked to a friend of mine. He says, no, nah, they, they like to lay their eggs on plants on the bottom. So he says he puts a big chunk of java moss in. Well, java moss, you know, get, kind of get flimsy. yeah, flimsy. It mm -hmm. gets dirty if you leave it for a period of time. So I forgot to stole a mop in sink, a sunken mop. And it's same, soft to me. It's a soft texture and everything. It has some strands on it from the fiber of the yarn. Threw that in there, no eggs. You know, a couple of weeks, no eggs. Talked to my buddy. He's like, no, 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 no. Jabba moss, don't use mop. I threw jabba moss in with, within two or three days, they're spawning. Mm -hmm. So the fish know the texture of it. Yeah. it. I thought it was kind of the same. Yeah. But, but it, it was a different texture of that jabba moss. Chalk and cheese. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Just That's like your yeah. roots, you know, looking in here and seeing the roots of the, um, the, pothos. Uh, yeah, the pothos are in your tank. But if you look at like um, uh, uh, jabba fern, they have real thin thread yeah. like. Like that black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. black. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that the, the roots, there's so many different textures of roots. So you got to try different mm -hmm. textures of roots even. Yeah. That's not, hey, I'm going to try plant roots. What type of plant roots? You just got to keep mm -hmm. splitting it up, you know, because there's a little thing like that that could be the catalyst. Yeah. There's no such thing as a failure. No. The only failure we do is we don't keep trying something different. Just be brave. Yeah. The books, the fish don't read the books. Try something different. Yeah. Take notes too, because yep. Regina and I have been doing this for so long. We've forgotten things that we tried because yeah, we never jotted them true. down, you know, and then yeah. it's, and one thing might work for another thing. Yeah. So if you have notes where you can flip back on, right. you could say, hey, I did that with those, you know, 15 mm -hmm. years ago, I can go back and try it with these. It's such a common issue, like not documenting stuff. Right. Yeah. 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 Like even like, yeah. I mean, I've done that with heaps of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I tried, I try my best. I try and like put it, like make a video if it's something worth yeah. videoing, but I'm not probably scientific enough mm -hmm. sometimes like I get caught up but yeah, yeah every, everywhere every every time you try something or you go to somebody's place you learn something new I mean it's something so crazy as we were at a guy's house today we use these little plug-in little LEDs they have a little three-pronged plug and you could splice them together and pretty cheap little LED light kind of a quick throw on a mm -hmm. tank type thing and I don't have when you set them down there there's there's light you know almost all all the way around and we were at a guy's house uh, yesterday. Adrian's. Yeah, yeah, AJ's. And he just put a bead of electrical tape over the top of them as a reflector. And yeah. I was like, why, why didn't I think of that? You know, something so simple and calm and you just don't, just don't think of it. It's like know? one of the things like I loved when I, because I went and visited Dean. Um, he had like, he was kind of the same, but he got so much enjoyment from those little things like, Mm -hmm. Like the little DIY side of it, mm -hmm. right. which I thought was kind of cool too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like figuring out those little, yep. like yeah, using that like al aluminium foil mm -hmm. to yeah, make like yeah, a reflector. Yeah, he had that over his shield too. We it's see just like so resourceful. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, so yeah, be the fish. That's like, you know, something that's just so overlooked. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it is. What that sound? Yeah, and it's like a cat. Children or cats being strangled? I don't know. It's Saturday. So or a bird. I mean, we've heard could be that crazy bird sounds. Yeah. All kind of crazy. We're laying in bed every morning. There's this this bird that has a really yeah. crazy song. Yeah. Probably a magpie. Probably. Yeah. We heard them. Yeah. Yeah. Every morning we've been taking a walk up yeah. to a little deli and, and getting breakfast and 
seeing all the crazy birds and stuff. Yeah, it's been enjoyable. Is Australia what you thought it would be? No. No. Um, it's a lot more lush. I was picturing, like, desert pockets and, I don't know. Yeah, a bit Too more Too many desolate. Mad Max movies. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah, I guess you do get that black feather out. Yeah. 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 It's it's like tropical. Mm-hmm. You know, every the the homes Very all nice. seem to be like um like uh, if we go on vacation on the beach line somewhere mm-hmm. the Outer Banks or whatever. Yeah. Um, and the fact there's there's palm trees and ferns and you know this is winter time but there's a, still a lot of stuff blooming. There's lemons, big lemons on trees and stuff in people's yards. Yeah, my neighbor's got um a lime tree, and I love to make like cocktails yeah like so yeah i was went over and talked to him and um he's like oh we're moving out so says come pilfer all the limes off so like for the yeah. last like <laughs> month yeah. i've been I sneaking did. over at night pilfering their limes yeah. yeah but, but yeah, um, yeah winter in australia is much different than right. winter in in pennsylvania yeah. That's oh sure. yeah yeah, yeah. So. it's like florida no yeah, right. yeah 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 it's a bit like that yeah, yeah. um so what are the, what's some of the stuff like then going around that like because when i leave i always come up with new ideas and like like almost come back like excited to do new mm. things like when I came back from the US I was really excited to breed like a ton of prey cocks and thread fins for some reason I don't know why but I just did that right so is there anything like that for you guys like you can't wait to get home and do I can't wait to get home and put more plants in my tank but yeah on yeah. the exterior yeah same here That that's probably the biggest thing I'm taking away now is uh, this stuff is so so enjoyable and relaxing to look at uh, we were at the, the AJ's place in um, AB. AB, yeah, AB, AB, yeah, yeah whatever. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah, screwed yeah, up your Ian, name. So. Ian, right? Yeah, you're Ian Bodrock. Ian, yeah, yeah, Ian's place. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but his place that even like behind his tanks, he'd have a sump on the bottom. He had these plastic, um, you imitation know, imitation plant. Yeah, gardens. imitation yeah. plants. You know, like half a meter by half a meter, and he just hung them in front of the uh, the sumps or the, where the wires and plugs and buckets or whatever were at. But when you walk in the room, your eyes focus on that, and you, you're, what's behind it, you just don't even pay attention yeah. to. It's not like an eyesore. It's right. like it's so enjoyable to look it, at. Everything just blend. The tanks and the, 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 the walls just became part right. of kind of the display, rather than being the walls that held the cords mm-hmm. and the plugs and everything and lights. Yeah. Yeah. It's like yeah, that, like, oh my, this dog doesn't stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, yeah, the nat- like natural feeling and, um, that extra element like probably helps you to actually be the fish right because you're like sitting in a room it's like really warm and right. fuzzy mm-hmm. and tranquil and right yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that's in the mindset yep. for it yeah like this tank like I I don't really I'm not really like, that big of a fan of like canister filters and that but like in here because this is the tank in like the living room I didn't right. want to make any noise right so like yeah, even yeah. little things like that just this is not a good tank for a sponge yeah. filter no um no. so that adds to it as well right. like bringing like a slice of nature into your home all right but yeah uh, there's there's a lot of fish too that um um, i'm I'm probably a little bit more psyched up with my rainbows i was starting to get a little stagnant with my rainbow fish but we've seen uh seen some new fish um that we we don't have in the states um what are those what's that what are those the the melandi yeah those are really cool yeah melanda golds i think Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. but uh there's a lot of there's hardy heads and we see quite a few fish in um the tanks yeah, here the that gobies. are native, yeah. yeah, some of the gobies and stuff that we don't have at home. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I don't have those at home either. I'm not going to be able to get them home or anything like that. But um, just kind of the inspiration of new fish, yeah, you know, getting something new to work with. So, um, but I was getting stagnant with rainbows at home. Um, this kind of sparked me up getting my rainbow fish going again. And I'm sure now that, um, and I was just seeing them in tanks. Now going to see Leo. Um, Leo's a big rainbow fish guy. He's got like and, of ponds. Yeah. And then going with Jason, going to like Sirius Creek and some of these places that, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be, I don't do much with videos or anything, but I'm definitely with the phone, do a little bit of like, nah, 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 I'm in Sirius Creek. Yeah. So uh, I don't know what many Americans, uh, maybe. Um, I feel like Gary Lang might've been there. I feel like Chris Lukap might've been there as well. Yeah. He's yeah, not, American, not many Americans have been there. Just, and you know, you can read about the biotopes and people could tell you about them. But being there firsthand is you, you're going to, um, Regina and I are going to take in so much more. So um, I, 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 I learn better that way with hands on. And, I'm and visual. Yeah, 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 visual and seeing it, you know. So that, that I think is going to be huge for us. That's why, like, I, I don't know, like, I've never been, 
like those online forums and stuff, I find it so hard to take the, I don't know if I'm just because I'm Gen Z or whatever, but like I take it, <laughs> I find it so hard to take in that information. Like I need to see a video or like um, go to someone's house and see like them do it successfully to like right. really, for it to really soak in like how to breed something or, right. but yeah, is there any fish that you guys are struggling with at the moment that you reckon you're going to put a lot of effort into when you get back? I'm going to put some honest effort into my Mocha Kila Peni, which is an African catfish. Um, I spawned my headstanders, the Colotus punctatus. I want to yep. see if I can replicate that and get them to spawn again. Other than that, now I have a bunch of... Um, I mean, you've done so many. <laughs> yeah, I have a bunch of pencil fish at home I want to get to spawn couple I've been successful successful with but I want to yeah we have the new red pencils masses. we're yeah. playing around with yeah what do you think is popular right now over there like what's everyone going crazy for plecos and nanny Pleco. nano fish yeah. plecos still yeah yeah plecos you know plecos you can put them with everything you know you can put it in with guppies there's smaller plecos you can mix with guppies uh, big plecos you could keep with big cichlids so they they, they kind of fit every Every fish you need, and then even the common, the man-made bristle noses, all the the blue-eyed lemons and the uh, reds and all that, the albinos, the calicos, those have been bred. They're so far from the wild, um, they could take any any environment. You know, they're, they're commonly used in African cichlid tanks with you know pH of eight point six. You know, and there's no no pleco in nature's found anywhere near that high of a pH. So there there's there's a there's a tank for every pleco. You know. There are no exception, and we don't have limitations. You guys have a lot of limitations on getting L numbers here, and most stores only had a handful of them. I was really surprised. They're, they're really big in the states, but um, Corey's there's an interest, but you know I hate, hate to say it, but um, American hobbyists, a lot of the hardcore guys, and I guess the aquarium society guys, people usually are pretty frugal with their money. Yeah, yeah, they're they're not going to yeah. spend big money for uh, even something new. They'll, they won't be the the first one to spawn them. They'll uh, they'll wait till somebody you know two or three other people spawn them and the yeah. price drops considerably. But I got my zebra my CW one one ones the zebra quarries. Well, I found fry before we left. Yeah, and I was really happy about that because I remember you did a talk and you were talking about how they were like ten grand or something. A yeah. piece in Japan, like yeah, when they first came out, eight yeah. years ago, or something like that. Yeah, they're they're still down, uh, two fifty, three hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. in, yeah, in the states. And, so it can be quite lucrative if you do yeah. breed them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I got the um, the high festus breeding, the ring of fryer quarries. Um, those are breeding pretty well for them. We've got quite a bit of those going. I want to get back to quarries. I we, we're going. To, Regina and I are going to be speaking at the um, American Catfish All American yeah. Catfish Convention in beginning of November. Mm -hmm in uh, Burlington, Vermont, and we're going to drive up. It's like a nine, 10 hour drive, but I want to get pumping up a lot of catfish right now to take up there, and try to make some sales, you know. What is it you like about Corey so much? Uh, it was the first egg layer I ever bred, but um, I just like their activities. I like the way they act. Um, you know, they're underrated. A lot of people think, you know, throw one in for a scam right. or a cleanup crew, a janitor. Yeah. But, uh, but that's not a good idea. No, they're no. not that great at it. No. Yeah, but their breeding behaviors, the color varieties, um, you know, some semi quillis are pretty aggressive, so you need watching that characteristic mm -hmm. with them, which people don't really associate with quarries. The finnage and scleromystex could be you know, breathtaking. Yeah. Fins, pectoral spines mm -hmm. longer than their body. You know, Do you uh, know how many different types of quarries you bred? Uh, I'm probably just over 100. Yeah. Um, there's guys, a lot of guys I know in the UK have spawned way, way more than that, but they get so many more fish in available to work with. Yeah. The US market, it, if we don't have the ooh ah factor, you know, if it doesn't have big spots or striking, yeah. you know, striations or patterns to them, they, they don't want them. Americans don't want them. It has to be something flashy. And, um, Bottom Cheap line is colorful. the importers. If they can't bring it in and make money, they're not going to bring them in. Yep. Yeah. So it has to be cheap and colorful, kinda. Mm -hmm. Does it? Yeah. 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 yeah so that limits us on on, you know, even if I wanted to breed them, I just couldn't get them. You know. But uh, 
doing best I can with what we got. I'm working now mostly with stuff that we haven't spawned uh, or the high end stuff like the high festus and zebras. But uh, just just a lot of crazy stuff that, um, you know, Regina's been working with Equus for years, oh, over boy. 10 yeah. years. Yeah. So oh, things like that. Sodalis, Reticulatus. Yeah. You know, these, these are common in a hobby and, and people don't breed them because they're hobby, but, or they're common in a hobby, but it's a challenge, you know, what, what makes them click, you know? Mm -hmm. And like after this long, like after having like basically just doing fish your whole life, like what is it that like you'd love the most? Like what makes you like, Oh, that's tough. Yeah. Like what is it about the hobby that just like, I don't know, that you don't really get bored of? Talking to people about breeding fish yeah. or just keeping them in general. The, the people. Because a lot them. of people want to be stingy with their information. Like, you know, this isn't the friggin' CIA. Yeah, the gatekeepy. Yeah. We're not, we're, our focus should be to preserve species, not the man made crap and not to make new species or new color forms of species, I don't think, but to keep what we have and to keep it going. There's a lot of fish that are going extinct because of habitat loss, because of mankind, and we don't do anything about it. So if you have information on how to spawn something, then you should be sharing that with anybody that will listen to you. Hmm. Even if you, if you write an article for your local newsletter, for your local club, or if you go on YouTube and talk about it, anything, Facebook, whatever, and share that information. For yeah. me, that's the best part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. talk to the people. You know? mm -hmm. It kind of blows my mind that a lot of the people, fish rooms we visited, you took us to here, we came in and they, they, they knew who we were. Yeah. And they, they, you did it quite often too, said a couple little things like, didn't you do that? You did mention it was something little. And I was like, wow. You know, yeah. I couldn't believe that you remembered that, you know. Yeah. But, you know, we, we walked in and, and people would be like, talking to with a few minutes, they would bring up and say, you be the fish. And I was like, yeah, wow, they, they yeah, actually like a bumper watched my sticker video. That's you know, yeah. pretty, pretty cool. So. You need a bumper sticker that says that or something yeah. like that. Yeah. What if I could get a <laughs> trademark on it or yeah. something, you know? But, uh, yeah. Instead of make America great again, we should make, <laughs> make aquariums great again. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. The hobby is dying, too. You we reckon? Got, yeah, we got to get kids involved. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know about that. Because, like, I feel like maybe in the way that you guys see the hobby, it might be, like, societies and all that could be. But I think that it's definitely growing because I think of YouTube and um, like it's just being enjoyed in a really different way. Like, like for instance, like I play social football and like one of the guys on my social football team like texted me and said, oh, can you give me some shrimp? I was like, yeah, I just hooked him up with like a bunch of shrimp. He set up like a little jar. It's like, that's like his start. Like he's technically right. in the hobby. And then like, you know, there's lots of little kids like that come in the store as well. Um, and then... The thing that's annoying about, about being a kid, like I can remember, is you just don't have any money or like your parents don't right. let you have tanks or whatever. So like as long as like the kid's going to be responsible with it, I, I give kids free fish all the time. Yeah, um, that's awesome. Like just because I couldn't, couldn't have them as a kid, like, right. you know what I mean? Right. Like um, not like zebra plecos, but like, you know, a bristle right. nose or yep. um, albino cats right. or something easy that's yeah. not. Yeah, because it encourages them we'll yeah them. or like um trade-in stuff mm -hmm. as well so i don't think it's dying um but i think the uh, i don't know like those like it's just different like it's just mm -hmm. a yeah. bit different now well that's good to hear that's refreshing to hear because mm -hmm. everybody we talk to everybody agrees that uh you know no kids are getting involved with yeah. their playing with electronics and you know they spend their whole life mm -hmm. on their cell phones yeah. It's true. Not getting yeah. into uh, not getting into fish at all. Like I pick my phone up probably like hundreds of times a day. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? Like without yeah. even knowing about yeah. it, I hate yeah. it. But like, oh yeah, everybody does it. Um, but like I think that uh, as much as like it annoys people that social media like, you know, there's heaps of shit information. Mm -hmm. um, like I've probably made crap videos, but like this, there's, there's like heaps of good information. It does spread the right. hobby as well. So. Right. Um, it's like how you said you hate glowfish, but at least it gets someone in. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's the only thing that I could say, kind of to convince myself to not go crazy. That uh, at least it gets kids into the hobby, and hopefully they'll right. they'll get aware of you know wildlife and uh, realize that that's a a man made thing and uh, appreciate the naturally occurring stuff. But f so for you guys, like then the the thing that just keeps coming back is that social element of the hobby. Mm -hmm. Is yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I mean, the spawning of the fish and figuring out the triggers to induce them to spawn, that's, that's probably second. Um, but yeah, number we, one is the people, we the still, people that we meet. Yeah, we still get excited when something mm -hmm. new. Like, like Regina, was, we were just talking about that the other day with you, that when she found headstand head mm -hmm. or fry in her tank, she came running through the yeah. basement yelling for me, you know. Yeah, like, what I, excited. I, you know, I thought she cut a finger off yeah. or something, and it was... <laughs> Here she, you know, she's like, yeah, see, I got, yeah. I got headstander yeah. fry. And That's I'm so like, cool too, like the fact that you guys both have the same hobby. Yeah, yeah. And like it is. A relationship kind of yeah. around that. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. neat actually. Yeah. yeah we he, share he, a lot of the same interests, but I just don't do plecos. I mean, we share fair enough. our love of nature. Our, both of our parents are from farming background. They're for generations. And everybody in our families love animals and love nature. Yeah. So I think that's a, another commonality that we have. Um, we share a lot of the same interests, just not the... Yeah, the we appreciate side. bugs and, mm -hmm. you know, all that stuff. Yeah. We tell people, you know, we, we've gone out. Like we went to Peru, you know, collecting with Ian Fuller, mm -hmm. the real Ian Fuller. And, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> the real Ian. And um, everybody was like, oh, my God, all the bugs, you know, the snakes, there's, you know, all that. And even when we come over here, a lot of my friends were like, everything over there is going to kill you, you know, it's like... You know, get a good look at me now before I leave because I might die over yeah. here. You know, not it's not like that. You know, I mean, yeah. going out in Brazil or in Peru, we've seen a lot of like inchworms would be on mm -hmm. you and stuff like that. But you know, that stuff isn't out to kill you. Right. You just brush it off. Or it's whatever. just the fact that you have to have respect for nature, just the same as you have to have respect for people. Mm. You know, you don't just go run up on somebody and get in their face. Mm. You don't want to do that with anything wild either. Yeah. And, and over here, you know, everybody's, this, you know, snakes would probably be the, but it's colder now, especially mm -hmm. up in the mountains, it's going to be colder. Yeah. So none of that stuff is even active. Right. Like you were saying, you know, you got, if you step over a log and step on one, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a different yeah, circumstance. Yeah. They're not hunting mm -hmm. us down, you know. Nah. And there's no apex predators over yeah. We don't have to worry about bears and nah. anything like that. Like so. we do back home. <laughs> yeah. So it's actually probably safer over here than. than yeah, I like my chances better here in the wild. Yeah. Like, yeah. So. yeah. Not that I'm like built for that, but. Yeah, I, want, I still want to see Regina box of kangaroo though. So. Oh, that was kind of cool when we went and checked out those kangaroos as well. Oh yeah, we were at that yeah. field. There must have been a, at least a yeah. hundred of them in that field. Yeah, next to the and we seen an albino one in the wild. Yeah. An albino. Yeah. So. yeah, no, I I think the um that element of like the social aspect of the hobby is really cool. But for me, like I don't know, the thing about breeding fish is just like I love the process of just like taking like two fish and making like mm -hmm. hundreds for oh, some yeah. reason. Yeah, yeah. Know, oh, it's yeah. like so cool seeing the fry mm -hmm. and like. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's so something cool about that. Yeah. It doesn't matter what it is for me. That's true because if I like to play with woodcats, a lot of the Centromachlis species and Balboglanus and everything, but their eggs are really big and you can watch the fry develop. Whiptails are like that too. Yeah. yeah. And that's really interesting because you get to see that whole metamorphosis of this one little tiny being develop into an exact replica practically of the parents it's really like um grounding mm -hmm. like not to yeah. sound like humbling or whatever yeah like yeah. not yeah. to sound like yeah a hippie yeah. but like yeah it is kind of cool like yeah yeah, so, yeah so, like for instance like sometimes like i'll even breathe like you saw all the white clouds in my room yeah just for the sake of it i just want to see hundreds well, of fish you yep. did you, i was really cool to see all your uh, thread fin fry mm -hmm. yeah. i tried thread fin rainbows multiple times and no success yeah. And I have a buddy that looked under a microscope, said he's seen the fry. They have like a tube-like uh, throat on them. And he's seen them choking on euglena. So you got to get something finer than that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you were showing me using your powdered food. Yeah, green cuisine. Yeah. 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 Well, powder. I powder it up in yeah. my hands, whatever. Yeah, the dust, it just like, kind of sticks to your fingers. I don't know if they eat the dust, or I don't know if the dust creates infusoria. I got no clue. Uh, it's working because I've like, seen tank fulls of fry and yeah, right. and, and indoors too. Yeah, know? yeah, indoors. That's yeah. the trick. Yeah, because yeah. like I don't, I don't know. Like outdoors, like I haven't done much outdoor breeding. I've, I'm gonna do it like summer probably. But I like the, I don't know, indoors feeling like. Not right. everyone can do outdoors. Like everyone can like have a room in their right, house where right. they can do yeah. something. So. Yeah, um, it's it's harder to reproduce nature indoors than outdoors. Feels like cheating to me. Yeah. Like if you do something outdoors, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. throw it in a tub and yeah, where it's supposed right. to happen. Yeah, right. yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Yep. I don't know. It does feel like cheating sometimes. I'm like, yeah, like okay, yeah, you did breed it, but you threw it in a tub. Right. Like, yeah. Right. So I don't know. Yeah. yeah. What else can we talk about? I don't know. We've done a lot of talking in the car and all that. It feels like. Yeah. Normally, if I ever do a video or something like that, like even with AB yesterday, like because I'm gonna film his again, I don't ask questions because I like, don't want to like 
skew I, things. I don't want to know anything, like, before I get there. Like, right. Did I do that with you guys when I went to your rooms as well? I didn't, like... Yeah, yeah, you did. You were, you, no, you didn't. Yeah, you wouldn't tell us what you were <laughs> going to talk about. You wouldn't tell us what you were going to... Yeah, I just tried to, like... Yeah, because otherwise you get to, like... You've already had the conversations. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah. they're flaring up like crazy. Yeah, they are. After that water change, all those um, microplastics... <laughs> yeah, pumped in there. That might be a trigger. Yeah, it's a trigger. Yeah, polyurethane. Microplastics. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I had like a, a hose and I didn't wash it out. And then I started just filling the tank up with the dirty hose water in there. And I was like, why aren't you going to wash it out? I was like, oh, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, <laughs> we, always, we always flush it out to get all the poly who knows what yeah. toxins out of the hose. Makes sense. That's the other cool part about breeding fish is like when you breed them and you actually enjoy the babies mm-hmm. too. Like... Mm-hmm. That's how it started for me was that because of the, I had no money as a kid. It was like, oh, well, I do want a tank of like 500 Danios or whatever, but like mm-hmm. I can't buy can't it. Afford it right? Yeah, so I'll just breed them up. Yeah. Yeah. And so I bred all the fish in there except for the Oddos. So. I but, guess to Aquarius, it's a very fascinating world because it's a world that we can't enter and be in for a very long time. We can't live underwater. Mm-hmm. So for... For me, anyway, it's a whole different aspect of nature that you can observe through a glass box. I yeah. I just think that's so cool. You're making yeah. more stuff in a yep. glass box. Yeah. That's what I like. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because I keep some people like the aquascape side of things and mm-hmm. maybe I'm not um, artistically inclined that way. Where like I don't, right. I'm not very good at aquascape. I didn't aquascape this. Jason mm-hmm. did. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe like, yeah. So for me, I'm just like obsessed with life cycles. Right. And, mm-hmm. Um understanding like yeah the growth and whatever right. like it's a really cool part of it that's mm-hmm. just where my yeah, interest is. lies and i think it's the same for you guys too yep, it is like you can appreciate this stuff but mm-hmm. it's not the same as like i don't know i feel like we could share the same blood type right. Right. <laughs> with the hobby yeah. right. so I mean, it's great to get a hold of a new species but i want to get a hold of a new species and see what makes it tick so that it will spawn yeah i want to increase the numbers that i have yeah and like you i don't have money to go out and buy you know ten fifty dollar fish just to have it in a glass box and look at it and, yeah, I, wanna... and I won't let her spend that kind of money yeah, on yeah, that fish either but that's it feels true. like such a waste when you just yeah. look at it like you know how the Japanese yep. who are saying they yeah. just want to look at it and I'm like well, them. why there's no point like yeah, I, yeah like I don't know I'm happy to look at these ones because I bred them right I'm like yeah mm-hmm. that's what they're for but like mm-hmm. I wouldn't just like buy prey cocks just to like look at yeah I don't know yeah. that's just the way that's, I think yeah. We buy every fish that Regina and I buy. Yeah. We buy with the intentions of breeding. Yeah, it. same. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, like I don't really enjoy fish that can't breed that right. much. Like clown loaches and that. Like. Yeah, I think that's... I'm like, man. What's the point? <laughs> right. I just don't want to do anything with yeah. them. Like, yeah. I feel like it's my duty in a weird way to like, if I get something to make more of them. Right. right. And share them. Yep. Um, and not juicing them up either. No. You know, people natural. that use... Yeah, you got to do natural. Do natural you know, the fish yeah. farms will hit them with hum, human, horth, uh, human growth Horses. hormones and stuff like that. To induce spawning, and that's that's commercial fish breeding. That's not well, that's why the rams breeding. That we get like really crap rams. Mm-hmm. Um, I think because they, I think we get like a lot of ex brood stock or like, um, yeah, they just juice them up to get the color into them. Mm-hmm. And yeah, yeah, at the end of the day, you are like, they are like little things that are alive, and um, especially when you don't need to do that, like just to make extra money, they're yeah. doing it. And, yeah. yeah, I don't know, not really something I'm that proud yeah. of, but. I don't do it, so. But yeah, is there anything else you want to talk about? <laughs> I don't know. I can't think of anything. I mean, we could talk about fish all day long, you know, yeah, if you start getting into specifics. Yeah. But um, you know, we yeah. do have to meet up with uh, Leo here in a, in a little while. I'm not sure what, what time, time is it is, but. Guess how long we've been going for? What's that? Guess how long we've been going for? How long? I don't know, just take a stab. An hour. Fifty minutes. Yeah, fifty. Yeah. Fifty okay. minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. All right, well, might, maybe we'll just wrap it up. Yeah, guess, yeah. yeah, people will get bored of listening to us. So, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Anybody Cut. that's tuned in to watch it, we appreciate yeah. it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Hopefully we'll meet, you. meet you someday. Yeah. And uh, it's thank you for yeah. coming here and visiting me. Sure. And Thanks for hosting us. Yeah. No, yeah. you're more than welcome. Yeah. You guys have been great. Yourself. Kind of yeah. ruined your week for you. but No, you have you. not at all. I hope you don't <laughs> feel like that at all because it's not the case. Great time, didn't we, Sam? All righty. All right. See you guys.